Hi and welcome to this episode of How to Edit Photos. I'm the family photographer and you've joined me here in my home studio working on the photos that I love so that I can help you work on the photos that you love. So let's dive in and get going. I like to edit photos with you, together with you, so that you can learn some tips and tricks as I go along with the photos I'm working on that you can apply to yours. Here are some photos that I would have taken a long time ago now, but I'm working through a whole backlog of photos ordinary photos that if you do a bit of editing, you can kind of make look into something that you want to keep, something that's helpful and something that's good. Sometimes it's helpful, these are ones from our last episode, to sort of go back and review photos that you've done, see if you want to make any changes. This was a nice edit, by the way, we removed that distraction on the playground there, added a vignette and it looks nice. I'm going to just have a look at this one, for example. This is looking good, I'm happy with this, but as I look at it again, I realize that these colors here from those PJ Masks characters are just a little bit distracting. So I can easily go in here, go over the top of that area there. I might even try to grab this area here. And I'm gonna to tone those colors down some. And the way you do that is to go into the HSL, take away the saturation of those colors, so take away the green, uh, take away the, I think the blue's already been taken away. I think it read my mind. And we should be able to do the same with the red. And instead of those colors really standing out on your shirt, they're there, but it's not such a distracting element now in the photo, which it definitely was before. So always good to even go back to the photos you have edited and just give them a second run. This is a nice photo, almost nothing special about it in a way, but you make it black and white, you make those blacks really deep, and it looks okay. So I'm happy with that. I'm working through this set at the moment, and so join me for a little while as I take you through the photos that I'm working on. This one, I remember you could take, I couldn't decide which crop I liked. I probably liked the vertical the most, or the wide, because we have a display TV that we put our photos on. So, yeah, I don't know which is my favorite, but it's all looking good. I can apply if I like to do a quick edit. The same settings say I use on this photo to the next photo if I'm in the develop module of Lightroom by going sync and going synchronize and it's gonna apply those same settings onto this photo here. And so that's a good starting place for that photo for example and potentially I don't have to do a whole lot. His face is really bright, so I'm just trying to see if I can bring that down some. And yes, I can, but I might want to just do a bit of localized work on his face. If you put the mask on, you'd be able to see what you're dealing with and where where it's going. Now, this is a very rough work there, but we can get away with it because we're just adjusting the highlights of that part of the image. So I think that's looking nice. There's something about it that I'm not happy with. I think it's the crop, so we'll see what we can do about that. I'm gonna have a bit of a play. 810 is a bit of a favorite of mine. We could try him centered and keep it wide. That's probably not bad. You can see that I'm snapshotting snap here just so that I can go back to these selections quite easily because I don't know about you, but I like to see things and try it first before I settle on what is sort of final for me. The vertical crop probably makes a lot of sense. So that's potentially the winner. I'm not exactly sure I'm happy with the overall coloring. Uh, exposure that is so I'm just going to just see what happens if I adjust that a little bit now it's very stylistic I suppose what we what we got here whether or not it has to be black and white it might be well suited to a color this one so I'm going to have a bit of a play and see which I prefer Perhaps in the comments below, you could write down the photos that you enjoy editing and what you enjoy doing with the photography that you do. I'm not sure why I had the contrast up so high. I guess I was doing a black and white 
before I decided to go back to color. If any of these photos I'm working on do have previous work done on them, like the one I just did, it's just, I do that sometimes when I'm selecting the photos. I'm not sure whether I should, if it's a keeper, whether I'm going to keep it. I do a bit of extra work on it and you know, have a bit of a play before I make my decision. And the more that I say all these things, it makes me sound like a very indecisive person. Maybe I am. So, I don't mind the modern three color profile on this picture, but what's not working for me is the colors on his clothes. Obviously, if you're a professional, you would go on a photo shoot and carefully choose the costume ahead of time, but that's not how I do it. I like candid photos of my kids, just where they are with what they're wearing. So I think that's actually killing it for me, which is why if I go back to my black and white, which destroys that color information, it actually makes that image work in my opinion. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. And I'm not sure what's happened with this image as I go through it, but I can see here this on the image. I'm not sure if that is some dust or some dirt on the sensor. It sure looks like it could be. It doesn't look like a lens flare and that is definitely destructive for me. But what I might try is just applying that black and white to it and seeing if it's still as obvious and if I still if this image is not still one that I want to keep I think it is and even just doing that quick edit it actually works I wonder whether I've made it too dark I'm not entirely sure if you're not sure about what I just did there it's a you can sync one image with another image and copy all the settings across from one image to another so what I'm going to do, I think, is try to clone these out. There's a clone tool in Lightroom. I'll give it a go first, but there's every chance that I'm going to want to take this into Photoshop. As you can see here, just how painful this is to actually clone out. I'll just check the settings. I wasn't paying good attention, to be honest. Capacities there. I could do a bigger feather, but that doesn't really matter. I'm just not sure why it struggled so much to do that. So it's decided. I shall never use cloning again in Lightroom. You can tell I've got a great love of it in Lightroom, and for good reason, and the reason is that it is absolutely ridiculous. I thought I may have just undone what I said before. I may have. If I have, it's just probably too late at this point. But I'll show you what you can do. If you, if you have, say, the Lightroom and Photoshop set, take it into Photoshop and we'll be done with a few snippety snaps. Even on my computer, this is not a high-powered computer. It doesn't take long, it's not a lot of effort, and it's definitely something you should do if you have destructive elements in, the, in an image that you wish to recover. And the reason you want to recover it is because the image itself is, is worth it. And I think in this case, it's, it pretty much is. So take it into Photoshop, get out your either clone stamp tool or the new one that's not so new anymore, I suppose, is the Content Aware Fill. I can just go around that blemish choose content aware fill and it will just do its magic and use AI technology to fill in that spot which will make it appear as though it never happened. To be honest I have not seen this happen with my camera or my sensor before I may need to clean my sensor but if you do have something like this happen to you and that's just all you need to do very simple and before you know it, it'll be gone. So I'm going to choose my content aware fill, get rid of this blemish on the forehead again, and kapow, it's gone. And you never know that I've adjusted anything. And that is one good reason why you want to edit, edit your photos. 
because you are trying to make them either a good representation of what you saw and what it was really like, or you're going, or you're trying to be artistic and take it in a new direction. And I've done a bit of both with this photo. I've made it more realistic by taking away those that unfortunate blemish. And I've also made it artistic by making it black and white. Here's the next one. I don't know what I want to do with this one, but I definitely don't like the colors. And it's an average shot. I don't have to keep it. Definitely adding some color to the image, like some warmth is going to be good. I like the darkness you get with clear, like the very strong deep shadows. And it might be what I go with. Landscapes looking good for me too. Black and white, I don't believe will be my friend, although we do have those yucky colors in the shorts again. So it could be a direction that we want to go. Even as I'd say that now, it looks like we have some options. So I'm going to take it in a couple different directions. I'll do a black and white version and a color version and see what we like. I'm just having a play at the white, white balance information to seeing what we can get there. Yeah. Always adjust your subject for just got a message on my phone. Uh, always adjust your subject for correct exposure and then go from there. So at least we can see the face now. This is good. Just going through all the basic stuff. Definitely clarity is my friend for this kind of image. In case you're wondering what effect this is, this is called panning. If you haven't got into panning, this might be something you want to do. It's a good way to not blur the background, but take out the background of a, of a image and make it less distracting. So what did we choose? We went on camera clear, which we thought might be our friend. We started there. We've added a bit of things. If we're going to make this stylistic and being a panned image, I think it's already stylistic. I'm going to just experiment with something which is spinning that around there like that and adding a bit of color to the image. That is adding a color that didn't exist in the original. I think if we're gonna go stylistic on this, and something that adds some warmth to it. Reds, yellows, oranges is going to be our friend. We'll try that. We can work it some more. Now everything is going to be a bit of a, I look and see with an image like this. So I'm going to check if I get rid of the blues and say the yellows, whether I can help those shorts look a little less problematic than they do. I can do this localized or I can do it globally. I think globally that's sort of working for me. And it's basically the crop now that's definitely bugging me. We could try to keep it wide and keep them centered. I think with an image like this, I think the main problem is he's missing the top of his head. So we might just try a wide portrait shot. See what I can get in the shot like this. I think this is what makes this image, you know, perhaps not the best one to be working with in the first place because we are missing the top of his head and it doesn't make it look, you know, very good. So what we'll do is see if we can add a vignette to this because he's nice and centered. A white one almost would work, not that don't usually do that. We could try. I think that's sort of the best you're gonna get with this image. We're giving it a good go. What are you what are your thoughts about this one? It's not really a keeper, is it? But if we consider where we started to where we ended up, it's a big improvement. And before and after doesn't even do the crop. 
I did say I was going to try black and white, so I'll just quickly go back to that now and see if it's still something we want to do. I think we could try three or two here. I might try this, get rid of the color that we added in the image if we can. I can't see that now. I don't know how to get rid of that. Take those shadows even more. Down. Just popping off the edge there in the white, so change that up. Having those deeper blacks is definitely helpful. I like to go into this area here with the deep shadows and just see it's the darkest parts of the image. We're making the darkest parts of the image even darker and just see what that does. All of this I think is helpful. Set we are somewhat making his face be exposed in ways that I think are unhelpful. So I might just do some local adjustments here so that his face is a bit more evenly exposed, let's say, than not exposed well. And it's the shadows we could liven up a bit. If we do that, it's not looking, it's looking okay. And I think we've improved it some. It's not really black and white, more like monohem, monochrome colors, which is my favorite. Probably that, to be honest. There you go, you never know where you're gonna end up until you give something give something a go. I'm going to just um, try adding a few more touches to this, which would include this and no, let's leave it at that. Let's move on. This image I've got is, I tried a black and white on this already when I was doing my pick just to see what that would be like and if that's something that I'd like to run with on an image like this. It's not a bad option. You can add some, make those black stand out a bit more. And there's lots of white in that image, which is going to be problematic. Again, I'm not sure whether I like the image as a whole. It might not be worth my time. Love you, my son. I think this is a fun moment in time. I'm just not sure whether it's worth my time editing this photo right now. This is always the dilemma. Do you keep it? Do you not? It's the crop that's bugging me, which relates to the composition of the whole image. I'm just not sure whether I want it wide or whether I want it tall. And him being cut off here at the head, that's definitely almost like a deal breaker for me in terms of keeping this image. Does the strength of the image still hold up with him being chopped off like this? Yeah, some, it's got some good emotion there. So we've got two black and white options there. We could try a color, see if we prefer color instead. Have a bit of a play. I'm going to just try Never know what you're gonna like until you try something, do you? Never would have thought I'd go vintage on a moving shot like this, but we could try it. The colors in that's a bit too psychedelic. This is a little bit more complimentary, I think. The colors in the shorts that's the main problem here no matter what we choose to do so i'm going to go in there and just try to remove some of that color information in those shorts it's very just a little bit too psychedelic for me so give that a go we go in there 
paint the bit that we want to edit, go into our HSL and we'll get rid of the greens, the blues and whatever else we can. I think I'm doing that globally. See if we can just get rid of the saturation of those colors just in the shorts area there. That's made a big difference. So we'll just refine that mask now. Just get rid of the bits that we want to get rid of, which is there. And just paint the bits of those shorts that we want. So we've made that better. I'm not happy with it overall. something about this image that I'm not enjoying. I think it's probably multiple elements, the colors, the clash. The, the vibe of the image is almost there, like it's not bad, but there you go. If I go back and just have a choose between black and white and color, I think my favorite of those for sure is this black and white with deep blacks. It makes the image work gets rid of that problem, problem we have there with the shorts. Now this, because it's such a similar image, this is where you want to grab this one and sync these up, apply the settings of the previous image, the image that you're working on, and you go back here and I'm happy with that. The crop is still the problem with this image. You know, you do the best you can uh, when you're on location with your kids just snapping what's there. I'm pretty sure I would have got absolutely dizzy taking this image. I am on this rotating horsey thing uh, with my son here just to get this shot. And it does not take much for me to get dizzy. I'm just having a bit of a play. It's the crop that's the problem for me in this image, which is the composition of the image as a whole. I'm a bit bumped about the head, how we're missing the head there. But what can you do? I'm going to try just a portrait again, as in a vertical crop, and just see what that looks like and if that's something that is helpful. It's not bad. I should have stuck with this. I just want to try that a bit wider and just see what that's like. I think it's workable. I think it's nice and what that's done is it's just isolated the subject of the photo which is my son from everything else just to go back now to my snapshots and see what I like I think of all of those I like this and I may even just try a square crop something like this it might be just what we're looking for imagine this working well say on a square canvas in your house as a sort of final format. Have this printed up square. If you can, see the difference here between this, sort of centered and having some negative space in the direction of motion. That looks a whole lot better and I'm gonna leave it there. That's my favorite and move on. Obviously this is a set of photos, so what we can do is I'm going to grab the next three, sync them all up with that same black and white settings. I do tend to favour black and white in general, everyone's got their own preferences, but certainly a situation like this one, it does help with the shorts and the costuming, what they're actually wearing, just gets rid of that information, just focuses on the scene. This is good, so we'll change the crop again, we'll try that one by one format and see if that's going to be good for us. I think it's, I think it's working, so uh, just fix up the black point. Everyone's got different preferences here. I like to have a very deep black point if possible. Just add a bit of contrast there. I like to have deep blacks because you can. 
So now you can see these are very similar images. It's really just sort of the same thing, basically. It's only just a few milliseconds later, isn't it? Look at that. Take your pick. I think this is better with the lightness interface. Wow, this is funny. Look at that. Look at the expression on his face. Whoa! I'm going to find what's going to suit this picture in particular. This image. Now it's on black and white eight. I'm just going to have a bit of a play whether any of the any of the other black and white profiles might be our friend here. And I had a feeling eleven or twelve might be what we want. It just adds a bit of vintage feel, like you've added some vintage glass to your camera. The is stylistic and for sure. I think it's going to add some to this image. So we'll do a bit of that, see what we like. Now, if we go back to where we started with this image to where it is now. It's a big improvement. A little bummed about the idea of being black and white in the sense that this is such a fun image, maybe it deserves to be something else. Would one of the other filters work well? Yes. Is there always multiple ways you can do an image? Absolutely. You've got to figure out what's best for you. If I was going to go colour, maybe one of these would be my friend. It's always good to try different things. It's just the colours on those shorts that are killing me. So I'm going to experiment with just a broad, broad brush here of getting rid of the saturation just to see what that would look like. In an image like this, I think I'm going to get away with that. Definitely going to get away with it. So I think I'll try. Call that our C1. We've got a black and white version, color version. What do you prefer? Again, I think there's too many psychedelic colors there. So I prefer the black and white. We'll go with that. And we might say farewell for now. Uh, we've done a few images together. Uh, we had a bit of a review of these images here. We did this one, no, we did that one last time. Apply that same setting to this image, this one, this one. Oh yeah, remove that blemish. Had a bit of a play with these pan shots. Chose some good compositional ideas there by changing the crop. We use that sync to apply the black and white multiple times. Definitely something you should do for different sets of photos. And got some photos there that I'm happy with. They're not A-class photos, but I think they're good. I don't think we even worked on this one. I'm pretty happy with that one too. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and we'll catch you uh, next time on how to edit photos. Uh, I'm the family photographer sharing my journey and helping you with yours. Bye for now.